Morning, fellow scientists. Allow me to introduce you to a pendulum. Yeah, there it is. OK, a pendulum is basically a mass suspended from a fixed point in such a way that it can swing freely. Our pendulum, you can see, is suspended from a clamp stand. We've used a string and um, the, there's a, a mass at the bottom. The mass on a pendulum is always referred to as a bob. You are going to be investigating factors that affect the time period, so how long it takes for one oscillation. An oscillation is basically there and back again. So, for example, one oscillation in our pendulum could be from there, here to there and back again. It could equally be from here to there and back again. So that's one oscillation. So we would go one, two, three, and so on. The three factors, the three independent variables I would like you to investigate are, number one, the length of the pendulum. So does the length of the pendulum affect how long it takes for one oscillation? When you measure the length of the pendulum, I would like you to measure from the centre of the bob to the point where it is suspended from the clamp stand. Okay, second factor, second independent variable is the starting angle of the pendulum. So it could be a very shallow starting angle or it could be a very large starting angle. Uh, not too large because you don't want the whole thing falling over. But you measure that using, or you can measure that using a protractor. So you put the, the crosshairs there on the point where the pendulum is suspended um, with the zero degree line on the vertical and then you can measure the angle of the initial swing. Thirdly, you can find out, you can investigate whether or not the mass of the bob affects the time period of one oscillation. Um, we've got different bobs that you can try out. Now, the method that I would like you to use is, because it's quite difficult to time accurately for one oscillation, what you will do is you will hold uh, the bob like so, and then the person holding it will count down from three, two, one, go. And the person will start the stopwatch. But you will not stop the stopwatch after just one oscillation. You will leave the stopwatch going and you will count ten oscillations. One, two, three, four, and so on. Then what you record in your results table, uh, so for example, here's the results table for pendulum length. So say the pendulum length there was about um, 25 centimetres. Maybe the time taken was uh, 12 seconds for 10 oscillations. So that means the time taken for one oscillation is 1.2 seconds. While you're carrying out the investigation, I would like you to consider why timing 10 oscillations will give you a more accurate answer than timing just one oscillation. Okay, good luck.